evening again everybody lovely to be with you again as we uh, pursue the truth of God indeed uh, the, the will of God for our lives um, through the scriptures um, day by day everybody who's a part of our church is invited to follow the pattern of the Moravians um, with daily readings and we have them from the Old Testament the Psalms and Proverbs and indeed from the New Testament and it's been our pattern each evening for different members of our church to present these short devotional videos so that we might kind of unpack the New Testament uh, daily reading uh, bit by bit and have a space for conversation. Um, and so do take that opportunity, enjoy that space for conversation, offer your own thoughts as you've read the text for yourself. Now we're concluding uh, Paul's second letter to Timothy today. Uh, the verses that we're given are chapter four, verse nine through to 22. And um, they are, as you might have them, um, subtitled in your Bible, personal greetings, personal instructions rather, and, and final greetings. And they, they might be the kinds of words that you're perhaps prone to run through quickly. I mean, you know how Paul, he begins his letters with kind of um, uh, opening remarks that seem, they can sometimes seem formulaic and we, we, we might sometimes run through them, but we, we always do well, don't we, to focus upon them. Similarly, uh, with these closing remarks, they're very, very personal, as is really common with Paul. They're full of names. Paul is, it understands the, the, the value and the, you know, the worth and the, the importance of, of people um, for themselves in their being and for the cause of the gospel in their doing. Um, and so we've got this long, long list. Um, we just want to pull out a couple of things, um, uh, perhaps some contrasting things um, that might um, speak to us today. Um, many of the names that Paul lists, he lists very positively. Um, and even when he uh, talks about um, being um, not, not having many people with him, he says, Luke alone is with me. Um, and he says, do your best to come to me soon. That's speaking to Timothy. And he says, get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. And he says this because Tychicus I've sent to Ephesus. Uh, before he said, Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. These are kind of positive things. He lists elsewhere others who he knows and loves and has worked with, uh, but they're not with him. So many of them he's listing positively. But he also um, talks about those who have um, walked away, um, not only walked away from ministry, but walked away from the faith itself. And um, the chief of these names in verse 10 is Demas. Um, and he's described as being in love with this present world. That's very relevant, isn't it? To how we've talked over these past couple of days about how Paul is thinking so um, eschatologically thinking about the fact that Jesus is coming again he's also thinking about the finality uh, the finitude the, the limitations of our own natural lives he knows that his time is short he knows that the time itself is short um, and so he's not in love with this present world except that he loves the people of the world with the gospel but Demas lost sight of this either he's got a, a an inflated sense of himself, of his mastery of himself and fooling himself that he's uh, going to be a permanent fixture or he's lost sight of the fact that this world and everything of it is passing away. Uh, Jesus is coming again and he will make all things new. He's become in love with the present world as opposed to loving the world in the present with the full knowledge that Jesus is coming again to make all things new. That is doubly tragic because Demas, he's mentioned elsewhere in Paul's writings in Colossians chapter 4 um, and in uh, Philemon, uh, that letter that we have. Um, both um, times he's, he's noted as being a worker in the faith, as being fully invested, but he's been captivated. Look, there's not a one of us that, that can be pri proud in our sense of permanence or um, there's not a one of us that should fool ourselves um, that we can uh, take for granted our devotion to Christ and his gospel um, are you investing in your in your relationship with God 
Are you in a community of faith that, that holds you accountable and encourages you, spurring you on towards the love and good works that we read in Hebrews chapter 10? Um, it, it's so important that we don't take these things for granted. Um, you know, we have another negative um, character um, in this passage, and that's Alexander the coppersmith. We don't know exactly who he is, whether he's the Alexander of Ephesus or whether he's part of the copper smithing community if there's such a thing um in troas um he's done incredible harm to um to, to paul and, and paul says the lord will repay him according to his deeds kind of set him aside from it we'll come back to him in a minute demas is a real kind of heartbreaker one who was committed and then fell away but look let's um consider how it doesn't need to end that way because here we have also in verse 11 mark this is john mark who um with barnabas was a part of paul's early ministry grouping and you'll remember how um he um, let them down and um, let paul down particularly and it became a point of friction between paul and barnabas they ended up going to do separate ministry because they couldn't resolve that at that time and we've talked previously as, as we kind of tracked this through the letters how there was restoration reconciliation between paul and barnabas they came to work again together and here we've got mark who once was flighty even fickle um, now paul says he is very useful to me for ministry it's like a right hand man isn't he he's solid dependable useful um, to paul and to the work of the kingdom i don't know um, maybe there's a few people who you might say at some point or another you've been a bit of a Demas. Well, um, maybe some of you might say at some point you've been a bit of a John Mark. There is a, a way of restoration, reconciliation, requires our humility and repentance, that changing of heart, mind, attitude, behavior that says that there has been a godly sorrow that produces repentance, leading to salvation without regret. There's hope for us all so if we are the, the the party who perhaps has got it wrong let us turn away from such things get it right again come again um, in devotion to god but if we're the party that's been wronged so let's put ourselves in the in the you know the shoes of paul for a moment a couple of things um here he is um talking about his defense in rome um you know he's, he's a pleaded appeal to caesar's court as it were and in verse 16 he says um at my first defense no one came to stand by me but all deserted me um, whether there was an active desertion or whether it was simply um, a lack of support you can understand how paul is, is feeling this and no one came to stand by me well he qualifies that by saying actually the lord stood by me and strengthened me so that the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it and I was rescued um, from the lion's mouth as it were the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom he's a very confident God but when he's contemplating the fact that perhaps others haven't stepped up to the mark as they ought what's Paul's response it is may it not be charged against them this is a very Christ-like um, behavior isn't it um, it stems for us from Christ on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Um, and Paul is extending that that sentiment of forgiveness and the op op openness, the opportunity for reconciliation, which he's already exemplified in his relations with John Mark. Um, and it's open to all. That's uh, a really good example, isn't it? But in the case of Alexander, I think we, we can see that... Um, you know he's he's putting himself in opposition to the gospel it's a different type of offense and 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 so paul hands him over to the judgment of god the lord will repay him according to his deeds look we've got to be careful haven't we sometimes um as, you know we're christians but we're humans sometimes we get offended with others and we believe that they are opposed to the gospel when actually there's just a bit of a personal issue um you know, it's not appropriate <laughs> to call down the vengeance of God upon everybody that you have a little disagreement with. Um, and indeed, if people might let you down, are you the kind of person who is speaking forgiveness and extending the hope of reconciliation? On the other hand, 
if there's someone who's consistently opposed to the gospel and, and, and you as a, a minister or messenger of the gospel, then it is appropriate to say, God, would you confound them in this? Um, Lord Jesus, it's more important that people know, you know, all the Gentiles might hear it, Paul said, it's more important that people might hear the message of hope in Jesus Christ. What else can we say? Um, people, 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 people. People who will work with you. Occasionally there'll be those who work against you. People who will cause your heart to soar, uh, like a, a, a Timothy or a, uh, a Luke or, or a John Mark. And there'll be those who disappoint you. I, I read just a couple of days of Facebook posts, very honest. Um, from um, someone within our movement um, just from, and they were just talking about some of the disappointments and, and I think honestly reflecting on how they had been a disappointment to others over the years um, it was quite heartbreaking to read but, it, but very real, very honest it, it just is the way of it, isn't it? How will you be? I love the fact that Paul he's just getting on with it, isn't he? He's just getting on with it talking about the ordinary things of life and at the same time bringing the extraordinary things of the gospel. Talking about the, 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 the limitations of his life. Not getting caught up with the love of the present. Um, talking about the limitations of, of his life whilst longing for the fullness of the life to come. Um, it's talking about just things like Trophimus, he was ill. Um, the greetings of different people, talking about the winter that's coming. He says, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books and above all the parchments. It's ordinary, isn't it? Of course, you know, if you do leave your cloak behind, that's why we have the fact that leaving your cloak behind is called Carpus Troas syndrome. You, you can have that one for free. That was awful, wasn't it? Um, it's just the ordinary things imbued with the extraordinariness of the gospel. Um, and how do we proclaim this? To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Come on. Before I venture any further terrible puns, let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you love people. Um, you love me. You love us. Um, and you, you love everybody more than anybody has ever loved anybody. Um, Lord Jesus, we recognize before you that sometimes we are not very lovable. Um, we're prone to wander. Sometimes we are um, faithless. Um, sometimes we fall in love with the present world rather than um, loving you and, and what you are bringing into being. We also say before you, God, sometimes we, we, we find ourselves hurt and, and, and wounded by others and we don't always respond in the way that we ought to. We're not as, as measured or as contented in you as perhaps Paul was. Lord Jesus, we pray that whatever part, if we are the ones who are failing or others failing us, Lord Jesus, make us like Paul in these words. Above all, uh, make us useful to the ministry clear proclaimers of the gospel um, be with us dear spirit of God in all your grace for your glory, amen amen, hope you're encouraged um, enjoy your weekend, we're looking forward to gathering um, as a church on Sunday, it's going to be absolutely fantastic, God bless you and see you again soon <laughs>